you have to kind of help people grow their mind. Like, why are you buying 20 units? That's so scary. Why don't you start up with four? Well, it, it seems ironic, but 20 is easier to manage. There's more cash flow for a PM company to be involved. Like these types of things that unlock people's mind are intertwined. And once they see that you can unlock their mind, you know what you're talking about, the sale is that much easier. Welcome to this episode of the success journey of real estate investors. Hi, my name is Brooks of Ios Pinheiro. I'll be your host for today. The goal of our show is to highlight deal makers of their first time deals on how Michael Blanc products or services help them along the way. Let's get to it. Today we have Jay Patel. What's happening, Jay? I'm doing good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Of course. It is an honor. I'm so excited to talk to you. I've read, you know, that you were, I believe, 21 years old close your first deal that oh. is phenomenal why wasn't <laughs> i doing this in my 20s <laughs> um tell us a little bit about yourself and your what you're doing now and how you got started i'm actually still 21 i turned 22 <laughs> yeah yeah i'm still 21 i turned 22 in two months so i'm actually a senior in college as well so uh, i go to depaul university uh, i'm in i'm in honors finance there but you know, looking forward to graduating and, and entering the real world. I'm 21, about to be 22. You know, and you mentioned, what were you doing at 20 years old? Why haven't you noticed at 20? It's thanks to Michael Blanc's products that I was even able to really get here because he provides a very, uh, it's a hard thing to do, but if you really believe in yourself and work hard, it's attainable type of product. And it's really, you know, you get as much as you you put in. And something like that is is very attainable when, when someone like a good teacher or a good mentor is, is really, you know, helping you through that journey. I love it. I love it. So when everybody else was partying up and chasing all the girls, uh, you are steady in finance and Michael Blanc. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, you know, let, we'll say that. I mean, I am a little guilty as of, as of late, you know, I haven't partied a little too much, but at the end of the year, uh, I, I'm retracting my focus, getting ready for next year. But I, I don't want to, I, I am a little guilty of that, but, you know, for three years straight, I was, I was literally educating myself um, you know, obviously Michael Blanc is a mentorship program, but, you know, I felt that I was adequate enough, just consumed all the content and all the different angles of the business that I had the skills to apply it. And, you know, for three years, like I didn't have the mentor, so I would just be reading a bunch of stuff and podcasts and stuff. I wanted to make sure that I, I felt like I was in the industry. So, you know, I had three years of really learning and then I was able to kind of enjoy for a little bit, you know? I love it. So that being said, one, how did you hear about Michael Blanc? And two, let's hear about your first deal. How did that get started? Uh, Michael Blanc. And I, I joke about this. Like I didn't even get to Joe Fairley said, it's just the median, you know, Michael Blanc is like, I consider him to be the median. I just came across his content and he's such a nice guy, but I was still very intimidated by the stuff he would say. Like he would talk about like, syndication i didn't know what that was then he would talk about debt structure he'll he'll, he'll mention prepayment penalties and sponsors and stuff like that and then i realized i had a long long way to go so you know as i discovered michael blanc i really used him as an outlet to, to learn everything about real estate um you know from the structure of of syndication to raising capital to managing an asset to closing the asset due diligence underwriting i really just learned from all of his videos he has he, you know, his course, I, I can't speak from the experience, but his, his videos are so good that you can, if you really invest the time that you can really learn. And if you're applying daily and underwriting that you can really pick up on a lot of stuff that he, that he puts down. And, you know, I, 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 I felt confident after three years, like I said, of, of just grinding and, and understanding the business that I felt comfort, comfortable enough to speak to investors. So I took time, I created a little business presentation and I, and I went to every investor that I could find, you know, like, I just talked to hundreds and hundreds of people um, and, you know, I, I was able to get soft commits and then I, I started underwriting deals. I, you know, it took me a while to, to, cause they asked for proof of funds, you know, they, all that stuff. Michael Blanc tries to help you mitigate around that, but you know, I'm in Chicago and, and they don't really care. You know, they, Chicago brokers are a little different. They don't care. They don't, they're not interested in seller financing. It's, you know, it's just, it's very strict. So I was underwriting hundreds of deals. I would tour deals uh, within the state, out of state. I came across, you know, this this 20 unit deal, and I was able to close on it on only eight of the 20 units. I'll, we'll get into how that happened, but you know, I was able to get the deal under contract, um, and and I was able to close the deal, and, and that in itself was a journey, you know. Let's hear about that because you have people that are humming and hawing. They're on the fence. They don't know if this is really the right journey for them. So what made you take action? And yeah. let's talk about 
you know, that process? What gave you the courage to put that 20 units under contract? One, mm. how did that work out for you? And two, we all know it, you can't do this alone. If you are, you're a friggin' phenomenal rock star. Okay. So how did you choose your team to take right. the deal down as well? That's a great question. I mean, to, to simplify, like what gave me the courage, it was really just a matter of putting in work. You know, I, I, as I said, like literally for three years straight, I would just watch every video I could find. And there came to a point where every new person I would watch, I wasn't like, I would learn very nuanced things, not any bigger picture moving forward things. And I realized like, all right, now you have to take, take, take action, you know? So, you know, I was very naive at the time. I was 19 when I first started looking and, you know, I was just very naive thinking like, I didn't even have a sponsor and I just had, you know, soft commits and I thought I could go close the deal, you know? So I was able to meet people and, and get sponsors and get people that had aligned interests. And when I started underwriting these deals, I found this 20 unit. Um, it was with a broker that I had been in communications with. Um, you know, Michael Blanc does this helps you by mitigating that, you know, the proof of funds and building that broker relations by just reaching out to all the brokers in the area with criteria and specifically what you're looking for. And and more so understanding what you're talking about. You know, that's another reason why I love podcasts because you can really you can read a real estate book, but if someone if, if you meet someone that just read a real estate book and they say like net operating income or they say cost segregation, it, and you know, people will just refer to things like NOI, cost segregation. Like right. you just, having the lingo allowed me to sound like I've been in the game and it took me, and I'm older looking too. So that <laughs> helps as well, you know? So I was yeah. like, you're 21, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was able to, you know, so that helped. Um, but when I got the broke, like every time I built a relationship with the broker, I would underwrite deals right away. Like kind of how what Michael Blanc and Garrett Lynch talk about all the time, just having responsive, being fast in, t in terms of response times, uh, communicating your feedback off your underwriting, showing that you know what you're talking about and your valuation is coming from actual metrics that are intrinsic. You know, it's not just this, I believe this should be lower. It's like, hey, we have study, we have market data here. PM is typically coming around this percent expenses, insurance, you know, just being calculated. And, you know, this broker trusted me and I told him very upfront, like the only problem I have is the lack of experience. You know, whatever you need me to do to take, tackle that up front, I'm willing to do so because I, I present myself in a way that I, I'm efficient, uh, you know, I'm, I'm diligent and I'm, and I'm very, very effective in terms of closing. And I wanted to prove that and showcase that up front. And, you know, when the 20 unit deal came, it was a great cash flowing deal right before, you know, the Fed started bumping, you know, rates and stuff like that. So I was like, this first deal was mainly funded through friends and family capital. And I was like, these people are going to have money destroyed by inflation. It's better for them to cash flow. You know, we're projecting eight to 10% year one, you know? So it's like, it was, it was just a, it was a no brain, you know? I'm going to rewind to something you said. You advised, you had soft commits. You had the money. Be or the soft before you had the deal and people talk about this right you know yeah. Vina Jetty speaks about this I think there's a few I think Michael Blanc has as well have the money you know and then you're going for the deal which makes that more stressful part of the syndication kudos to you for having the money first so I want to point that out have you have you done any deals the other way around and if so yeah how has that been different from having a soft commit first as opposed to now I have to syndicate now I got this deal let's hear about yeah. that no it, it's it's a really big learning lesson and and I pivoted to, to securing soft commits prior and you know Vina Jetty talks about it Rob Beardley talks about it Brian Briscoe talks about it everybody talks about it now because once you're I feel like personally everybody goes through a phase where you you realize like you know deals are truly the hardest thing to find you there's capital everywhere there's three trillion dollars in, in IRA money you know so it's like the deals are the hardest thing to find and most private equity firms are closing one to four deals, if that. So, you know, I, I truly believe that analogy because it, 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 when you comprehend it, it just makes sense. But, you know, you realize without track record, without experience that it's, it's a lot harder than it seems. There was actually a deal um, in DeKalb. It was, it was an 80 unit deal and we had it under contract for 5.7 million. And we were working with an equity group at the time that ensured me that, you know, they had partners that could fund this deal and, you know, it was through a person that I've trusted. And, you know, when the time came to really put up money and go into earnest money, you know, they were like, oh, we need more time and stuff. I was able to salvage that relationship with the broker, but I just cut ties right there. I knew I wouldn't be able to close it. I didn't trust the equity group. And, and that really allowed me to pivot and make that decision of let's, let's find out how much money we for real for real have based off the people that we trust. And then let's shop off that. And that's kind of like the procedure we took based off of 
you know, the pivot that we had tonight. Excellent. You are wiser beyond your years, Jay. <laughs> you. I'll tell you that. So how did you choose going back to building a team? How did you choose the people that helped accelerate your success? That's a great question, right? So you, you mentioned uh, the website earlier and I'm going to shout out, you know, my brother, Teddy. Uh, I met Teddy at, at Apt Electronics where we both work um, and he was a, he was a stock guy. He loves stocks. Like his goal was to create a hedge fund and the reason why I really liked him and his way of thinking is because he wasn't a traditional stock guy. He wasn't a traditional, let's short these stocks, let's day trade, let's, let's, you know, he wasn't on that. He was on some Warren Buffett, let's look at these values intrinsically. He, he was like that. He, he wanted to see the fundamentals of operations, who was operating, who was in charge, you know, their track record, going into the stores to see their products and how they're selling. Like he was looking at the business from a fundamental structure. And that's really how you evaluate any property. You know, you're looking at it from top to bottom. How's the property management? Who are the tenants? What's the tenant base? What are the demographics in the area? And it's really fundamental. And you're you're, you're not just making an assumption based off the stuff that you see in the news. It's you're looking at the balance sheet and, and the people in charge, you know, the operating group. And when I saw that, I, I kept telling him, like, I knew he would be my business partner. I, I You know, we laugh about this today, but he was really the first piece of the pie because He's really smart. Like he's he's a he's a geek with the numbers. His he's an Excel freak. Have you saw the website? He's so good with, with website all that. is phenomenal. Really? Yeah, no, usually at the end I ask for the website, but hell, shout it out now. The yeah, website, yeah. wealth of information, y'all. It's clean. I love how it zooms on over the city. I was telling Jay before our interview. You're going to, up. I need to update our website. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to hire your brother. Let's hear about, you know, all the, the blog on there is phenomenal. Let's hear you talk about that. Yeah. So JP you know, acquisitions, right? Yeah. JP acquisitions. Uh, the website is jpac.com. But yeah, when I met Teddy, I, I just kept telling him like, Hey, real estate is so much better than stocks because of this, 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 this. And it took a lot of drilling. I'll explain like a cash out refinance model. And he wouldn't understand that. I would explain cost segregation. He wouldn't, understand. he wouldn't believe it, you know? So finally, when he came around, he, he, he came and he was showing me that, you know, he cares about the company just as much as I do. So, uh, you know, Teddy was basically my first partner. And, you know, after that, we, we, we really just took it on. You know, he had all the deficiencies. He covered all my deficiencies. Uh, I'm very vocal. I can raise capital, but he's very good on the back end. He's really good with numbers, Excel, spreadsheets, uh, the website, you know. So we, we just, we perfectly just aligned interest uh, based off our deficiencies and, you know, slowly but surely, you know, we have friends that are interested in, in what we have going on. So we built a small group of people that are just slowly understanding what the company does in the business. And that's organically how we're growing. But Teddy was really the first person that I, I considered a partner to really exponentially grow the company, you know, and the website is, is, a, is a pure reflection of growth because, you know, you can make all these podcasts and stuff like that, but people want to see the breakdown. And that's what Teddy does a great job explaining everything, how, how capital is converted into a syndication, how the syndication is structured, what returns look like, what cost segregation is, why multifamily. And, you know, the blog posts you know, that Teddy works on, he puts so much time into them. And we get so much feedback from people that say like, hey, we checked out the blog. It's very informational. And we know down the line, it'll just make us more credible and show our history of growth, you know? That is 110% accurate. I always dig on people before I speak with them and I loved how you explained everything. You guys need to go on to jpac, jpacq.com. Check out his website, y'all. It is so clean. So I'm going to pivot though really quick. Were you comfortable? And I asked this to everybody. Um, were you comfortable talking about money? You're talking, you're raising millions of dollars here, Jay. Yeah. Um, all different cultures, some feel that money is taboo or we keep it to ourselves and we have a hard time talking about it or we have a scarcity mindset. Mm. How were you able to discuss money and were you comfortable from the start? Yeah, you know, you that that is the preface of, of, of any conversion. You know, so when you get that meeting, I look at it and I explain to people like, hey, what is your situation? What are your goals? You know, and I'll explain to them what we do and what we provide and how our goals could be aligned and then see what they say. And if there's some buffer in between, or I feel like there's some kind of resistance, I try to figure out what that is. And it's really just talking about, it's just talking about it. You know, it's, it's a taboo thing, but you have to come in very confident and convicted. And, and that's what really allows me to raise capital is I'm very young. And, you know, I always have those limiting beliefs, like you say, where it's like, 
you know, I always thought to myself, like, I'm 20 years old, I'm 19 years old, like, who am I to raise millions of dollars? These people that I talk to are double my age, you know, and they make real money. And it's like, who am I to do all this, you know? And I realized, like, I have to become the avatar that I see myself being in 20 years and act as if I'm there already. So the biggest step is, you know, using that sales pitch if they're already here. But, you know, I say this on my website, um, and, and it's a, it's, in a, it's on the uh, about me section. And it's like, I grew up in a very limited belief mindset. Like, I, I believe that everybody lived like me because we were so constrained. All I know is what I what I see around me. And we were very limited. My dad would, we would literally go an extra mile to get 50 cents off groceries, you know? A little bit about myself. We have seven people living in a two bedroom house. And there is times where it was 10 to 15 people because my dad and my mom let four families transition from India to America. And we took them in, you know, all throughout my high school. So I've always understood limited mindset and scarcity. But that's the biggest thing to convert someone on sale, especially when you're raising money, because a lot of these people, you have to grow their mindset to bigger picture thinking for them to understand what you're really doing. A lot of times I'll ask, you know, unsophisticated capital, like, this is what I do. And they're like, why are you hiring a property management company? And I have to explain like, well, if I buy hundred units in California, hundred units in Florida, how am I going to manage the two? And I'm not in the property management business. You have to kind of help people grow their mind. Like, why are you buying 20 units? That's so scary. Why don't you start off with four? Well, it, it seems ironic, but 20 is easier to manage. There's more cash flow for a PM company to be involved. Like these types of things that unlock people's mind are intertwined. And once they see that you can unlock their mind, you know what you're talking about, the sale is that much easier. And, you know, I speak with conviction naturally because I'm a confident man and I, I know the work I've been putting in, which really helps, you know, that that's, that just makes it a little easier, you know? And I'm going to go back to the statement you said about speaking with people that were twice your age, making double your, where you see... And it reminded me of a statement that somebody had to once told me, you put yourself where you see yourself, mm, Yeah, you know? And I was like, that's so true. And, and it's, you hear it from your different, the ways that you grew up and the ways we were taught about money, you mm. know, and sometimes it's hard to shake that off. So good for you, you know, to be able to see the value. And what people don't realize is that the bigger the deal, you can do 150 units. And I feel like it's easier than doing the smaller units. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes it's the exact same amount of work, but it's mm -hmm. going to accelerate your financial freedom a lot mm -hmm. faster, right? Completely so, agree with you. One thing I wanted to also ask you is people are, are busy or maybe people pretend to be busy, you know, <laughs> it's like this weird thing that's in this world. Everybody needs to be slammed all the time. That being said, not for me, I say no a lot. I'm learning to say no. Um, how do you manage your time? You know, do you have kids? Are you in a relationship? Are you managing a W-2? Are you in sports, extracurriculars? Like, how do you take care of JP acquisitions and take care of Jay at the same time? That's a really, really good question. And, and what I, you know, to kind of wind back on what you said, you want to be free to say no. You know, that that's the true freedom. And that's kind of what what I was, you know, that's kind of what I've what I've been working towards. And, you know, it, it is a lot, I, you know, for the past year and a half, like once I once I understood like, okay, I need to close a deal. I was so frantic. Like every single morning I would wake up anxious, like de like defeating myself. Like, why haven't I closed a deal? Like I was obsessed with it and it was very unhealthy. Like I, like my mind, that's all I cared about. And, you know, it, it wasn't unhealthy in the sense that like, you know, I was like lose, I, I'm getting, you know, it, it wasn't anything like that. It was just like my whole mindset was, was fabricated to closing a deal and it was unhealthy. But now that I've closed a deal, my schedule is a lot more free because I have less of a, uh, you know, it's like a weight lifted off my shoulders, but I, I don't have kids. Um, you know, it's interesting because my parents themselves, you know, don't understand what I do. It, you know, it's very complicated and they don't understand it. And so they just see me like not home ever. And they're like, well, what are you doing all day? And I'm like, do you think that this just happens like over, like, do you think we just buy the property and that's it? Like, you know, there's legal, there's accounting, there's cost segregation, there's the investors, like, they don't understand it's ongoing. And for me, you know, I'm in school right now. So I have to balance that. I have a job as well. I used to have two jobs, but now I have one. So I have a W2 as well. Um, I, I go to the gym every single day um, and, and I have family and as well as my team to manage. So every day, you know, it's just school or work. And then after I go to the gym and then we have meetings or I have investor meetings throughout the day. And then I have one big team meeting at night. And it, that, that really consumes my day. And then after it's just repeat every day. And you know, I, I don't have a girlfriend right now. I don't think it'd be fair for her because I have no time for myself, barely my family. I think it'd be very selfish for me to have a girlfriend. Um, 
you know, I, like that's kind of why I've been going out some more now, you know, because I've been giving myself uh, some some relaxation time and, you know, we, we don't have to talk about that, but, you know, I, I do just fine, but, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, uh, I just, I really wish I had more time to dedicate to, with my family first and foremost, but, you know, the time will come. I work hard now. I pay the price now to pay any price I want later, you know, so that that's kind of where I'm at with that. And it's it's a lot to juggle, but what I like to do is keep in mind the bigger picture and what I'm doing it for. And every time I think about my parents and all the sacrifices they've made, it's so easy to, to for me to keep going. It, it's, you know. Boom, you just answered my next question. When things get hard, where, where do you go mentally? Like what keeps you going? When things get hard, it, so it's your parents, it's your family that motivates you. Like, hey man, they, they fought. I think you mentioned that they fought to get you guys over here, right? Yeah, yeah. And along with multiple other families. So now you want to make it worth their while and make them proud of you. And I'm sure they're extremely proud while the rest of the 21 year olds are getting all messed up and getting tossed, you know, chasing skirts and they don't know what the hell they want to do with their <laughs> life. You're buying apartment buildings. Yeah. So kudos, massive, massive kudos to you. I have a couple more questions for you. One, I would love for you to describe a, a word or a phrase either present or future that describes your multifamily journey? Honestly, I would just say perseverance. Uh, I think I think that would be the word because, you know, just for me to even get to my first building, like there was so much internal limiting beliefs. And I feel like once you can unlock that and persevere past yourself, there's 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 really no roof to what you can accomplish. And, you know, even, even with this, right? Like, so I closed my deal and my next goal is to close a, a value add deal. I, I want to buy a $3 million deal with a million dollars in value add and bridge the deal and, you know, raise a million dollars. And and for me, like, I start thinking about that. Like I have another mentor, his name is Eric Kogan of Ashland Capital. And I, and I talked to him, he's like, my, my uncle, who's the founder of this company has 30 years of construction experience. And even with the stuff going on right now, we can't get definite like quotes from construction side. So it's really just persevering and being able to pivot and having a growth mindset because it, you know, I already know I'm in, a, in an industry where it's scalable and sustainable, which will give me longevity, but it's going to be myself that, that prohibits my growth. And if I'm consistently persevering and, and adjusting and, and looking at every problem as an opportunity to grow, I, I don't think that, that I think the sky's the limit really, you know, lastly, how can we find you? How do we stalk you? How do we connect with you? What are your social handles? So uh, my Instagram is my name. So J-A-Y-N-I-S-H and then A24. Um, and then my LinkedIn is just my name, J-A-Y-N-I-S-H and my last name Patel. Uh, and then those are the those are the pretty much the only two socials that I'm on. Um, that's where I do my marketing, but feel free to reach out to me there. And I, I always want to help people because I know like throughout the way, like, you know, when you're reading even Michael Blanc's book, like you're not told like, okay, during due diligence, these are the sequences that you should take first do this, 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 it's like little things like that. Like I'll even go into like a little stuff like this. If you're serious about closing a deal, have an inspector with you, have a, you know, have these people ready. So, because they're going to be two, three weeks out, you know? So it's like, they don't tell you little things like that. And it's like those little nuanced things that, you know, I would love to help people with, because if I didn't have my mentor, Eric, like I would, I don't know what I would have done, you know? So it's like, it's just helping the next person come up and, and, and you know, that, that's what I'm really about. So what are your final thoughts? You have, he has thousands of people listening right now. Okay. They're going to be watching this. How do you get people off the fence? And what are some words of wisdom? Final thoughts from Jay Patel. Let's hear it. Yeah, honestly, um, you know, I saw one of one of Michael Blanc's videos. I forgot who was who, who it was with, but this guy was stuck in analysis process for seven years and I don't, I don't know which interview it was, but when I saw that, I was like, that's scary. You know, um, what I would say is the scariest part is, you know, everything sounds good on paper, but when you start underwriting, you become very, very conservative and you break your own deal. Uh, I, I was a big fan of doing that. And I was like, we're never going to close a deal at this point. So what I would recommend to anybody that's really scared of, of taking on, you know, a big value add plan or just getting started in general, I would say to buy maybe, you know, in an area of a C-class property where I know Garrett Lynch is buying a lot in Chicago, but like start off where, you know, you can do like eight to 20 units and they're cash flowing, they're stabilized in, in C-class areas where you're playing more of a management role and you have more things in structure and intact to build confidence. Because for me, it was like, 
I was I was ready to do a value interview. I was ready because I believe in myself. I knew I would be able to pivot through everything. But if if a lot of people don't have that confidence and are on ease and 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 are scared to take that first step, you know, your confidence comes from your preparation. So if you're if you're underwriting, you know, is 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 fully loaded and you love your underwriting, you're going to be that more that much more confident about a deal. So you know, instead of looking for a deal with a lot of meat on the bone. Maybe find a group of investors that you can trust and show them during a time like this where there's tons of inflation, how they can hedge through it and cash flow through economic cycles. And, you know, kind of just go about securing a stable asset at a high cap rate, maybe a six, seven, eight, where you're seeing decent cash flow and you're getting that experience of closing and, and managing an entity. Because from there, it's it's really up, you know. So it's just just even if you have to take the smallest step, um, I would just say really, really know what you're talking about and, and really, really feel comfortable with your underwriting. And then don't question yourself. If you're if if your underwriting checks out, just 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 go through with it and and trust yourself and and trust your resources. You know, I love that you mentioned preparation. And what's the saying? Success is when preparation and opportunity meet. <laughs> you I, I know, I completely agree. I completely agree. It's 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 that one saying where the harder I work, the luckier I get. You know. Thank you. Oh my yeah. god. I was I see that was that was I was like how can I work that in and you worked it in yeah, yeah. People, they'll say you're so lucky and when it comes to certain things and it's kind of a pet peeve of mine and I'll say yeah the harder I work the luckier I get so my brother from another mother no, okay? you know, I have to add to that right because a lot of people will, will see me now and like you know that my age and they'll be like hey how'd you do all this and I'm like well you know like I I didn't understand that first because I always felt like I was like if I talk to someone that's been syndicating, like that has 300 AUM, I, I, even before I closed my first deal, I felt that I had the, I had enough education to speak to them. And I thought we were on the same level to even be in a, in a room to have a conversation, right? I truly believe that because of, of all the preparation I, I put in. So I always wonder like, why don't these people like really believe that I can do this, you know? And now that I've closed the deal, I've understood like, it's so hard to do. Like as soon as you do it, people will just look at you with, with complete respect. And, and now when people come to me and they're like, Hey, how do I do this? How do you raise money? And so I'm like, you know, I don't mean to be harsh here, but I can see it in people's faces and their eyes and in their demeanor. You guys don't even care enough, have the passion for it, nor do you have the resilience to really, you know, put forth. So it's like, you know, the, the one person that I can help, you know, I, I would love to help, but it's like most people nowadays, like, are looking for like a, a, an injection of motivation. It's like, you need to find it within you to, to, to find what you would calls you and really go from there because everyone's looking for like, how'd you do this? How'd you get so lucky? It's like, well, find something you really care about, put 10,000 hours in and you're going to get lucky. You know, it's just bound to happen. You know, I, I, love I, had, to, it. I had to throw I, that in. I had to throw I that in. I love that. And that's why it's how people to sign up for masterminds, mentorships, yeah. Again, put yourself where you see yourself. Collaboration mm -hmm. is the new currency. You're not right. good at something. Find somebody who is. They'll fill in the gaps. Um, Jay, I want to make sure I'm respectful of your time because I know you and I will just BS back and forth. Yeah. You and I were already hitting it off before, no, I know, I know. So before we were even on the interview. Yeah. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I I am, your family must be blown away. You're an inspiration to many. Keep doing what you're doing. And I can't wait to meet you in person one day. Thank you. It means a lot coming from you. And I appreciate you taking the time to, to take this interview today. It really means a lot to me. Oh, no. I was so excited. I'm like, he's 21. I know it's cute because you brought him 21. I got my first day. I'm like, hallelujah. All right. <laughs> I appreciate you. I can't wait till we share this with everybody. Thank Have you a so phenomenal much. day. Jay, reach out to me if you need anything. I will. I appreciate you. You as well. Bye. Hasta luego. All right. Bye. <laughs>